Hi everybody, uh, welcome to week five, zero five. It's actually the sixth week of classes. Uh, we're getting close to the halfway mark, which is a little frightening. Um, we're also almost into October, which means uh, Halloween, candy, um, and more frightening things, maybe. Um, I always felt like time went by really fast when I was a student, and it seems like things are going even faster now that I'm a teacher, maybe. So a little bit of a change in the video structure this week, as you may have noticed. Uh, rather than uploading a bunch of little teeny videos, I'm going to try and upload one big video. Uh, this does two things. Uh, first, uh, it means that if you're having trouble accessing the links, as long as you can get to the first one, everything else should be okay. Uh, two, it makes my life a little bit easier because whereas it takes longer to upload one video, um, I can get that and once it's up, everything is done. Before it took like two hours to upload all of the videos, it took a very long time. Uh, this also means I should have more time and more ability to make sure the captions are solid. So if you're making use of that feature, maybe this will work out a little bit better for you. Um, right. So presentations. I want to take a little bit to talk about presentations. Um, unfortunately, it's a little bit beyond the scope of this class to go really in-depth into making effective presentations. Really, all I can talk about is the technical aspects of creating them, which at this stage in the game, you guys have learned so much and demonstrated such a high degree of knowledge that I don't know that creating a presentation would pose much difficulty for you. Um, I have included a link to a free PDF on creating effective presentations. It's by a guy, his name is uh, Dr. Zen Folks. He's a really effective presenter and he touches on everything you kind of need to know about creating good presentations. Um, another thing to keep in mind if you're interested in what makes a good presentation, find people that are effective speakers and whether or not you like Apple products or like the man himself, Steve Jobs gave excellent presentations so uh, looking up some of his um, looking up some of the presentations and keynotes that he's given is a really good way of finding good presenters. Another place is uh, TED Talks. I think last week or a week before last, I posted a video to a TED Talk about keyboard shortcut or not keyboard shortcuts, but about uh, computing more efficiently. Um, a lot of the presenters at TED, especially the ones that get featured, are really good speakers, and so you can kind of get a good feel for what makes an effective presentation that way. One thing, uh, just a, a quick pointer as far as my personal preference goes, I'm more of a less is more presenter kind of guy. I like to have simple slides that are clean uh, with one or two points on them and use those as more of a touchstone to emphasize what I'm talking about. And obviously if you have any data or anything, it's good to have representations of that, which when we've looked at creating charts, that's a really good use of a chart is to put it in a presentation because nothing drives home a point like pretty pretty pictures. I'd also like to talk about uh, citations like citing your work. Um, I'm not going to be terribly picky about it in this class, but I want to mention it. Uh, it's mentioned in the syllabus, but I'd like to draw another point to it because unfortunately there's going to be more writing in the future. Um, Use whatever source you can for information, I don't care. I think Wikipedia is a perfectly fine source. I don't want to get into the philosophical and political debate about whether uh, it's academically sound to use Wikipedia. I think it's okay. Um, I do ask, though, that if you get information from Wikipedia or another source, that you cite these sources. If for no other reason, then oftentimes I've seen a lot of good information, and I'd like to see where you got it. I mean, it it could be straight out of your head, which is fine, but if not, I would like to be able to use it as a resource in the future. Um, And anyway, I'd also like to take a moment to talk about looking stuff up. I really think um, one of the big points of this class is learning to find things on your own. Um, the ability to search on the internet is an amazing opportunity to find new information. And I don't believe there you'll... 
I don't believe any one of us will ever be in a situation and a job or a class, maybe in a class, but definitely not in a job where you'll be asked to do something and your employer will say, okay, I want you to do this, but I, you can't use any resources to look up information on it. It's been my experience in the workplace that it's exactly the opposite. They, they're one of the first things they ask is, are there any books or resources you need to more effectively do your job? It's one of the reasons why I'm a proponent of open book, open note tests, because I think, especially in this class, it's more reflective of reality to give you an opportunity to look up an answer rather than forcing you to memorize it. Oh, back on citations, I don't care if you do like MLA citation, I just want to know where you got the information. So put like a footnote or an asterisk or something and say, you know, this information came from Wikipedia or Encyclopedia or I don't know, Microsoft's website or something. I would just like to have that uh, information. Oh, one other thing I'd like to talk about. I saw in a lot of homework, people were, I may have already mentioned this. I saw in a lot of homework people talking about scatter plots and saying that in a scatter plot the x axis was for time. It can be for time, but it's not always for time. A, a scatter plot really just shows the relationship between one entity and another. Um, you can have anything in a scatter plot, it doesn't necessarily have to be time and something else. Usually if you, if you have such a clearly defined axis, you would use a different kind of chart. If you have time either on the x or the y axis, you would use a bar chart or a column chart or something like that. Which raises another good point about bar and column charts. They're technically different. Um, on the last homework assignment, I didn't ding anybody for points on, on calling a column chart a bar chart because I think the distinction is stupid. But uh, for clarity's sake, I thought I should mention it anyway. Questions. I didn't really have any questions this week. Um, there were a few issues with accessing uh, homework assignments, but uh, I think we've got those sorted out, so um, uh, that should be okay. Um, summary of the week. So this week we're going to talk about a lot of stuff with spreadsheets, and this is going to be the last really intense spreadsheet week. After this we're going to move on to other things. So let's see, this week we're going to talk about multi-sheet spreadsheets, named ranges, data validation, we're going to go over if and if error a little bit more. We're going to look at count and its variations, uh, data filters, pivot table reports, and a little preview of index and match. Those are pretty powerful functions uh, that we're going to look at a little bit this week and go into more in depth next week. This is basically, if you look in spreadsheets, everything under data. Uh, if you click on data, everything under there is what we're covering this week. Um, for the tech stuff, the sort of tech ideas, we're going to talk about Khan Academy briefly. It's an incredibly powerful resource. If you haven't visited the Khan Academy website, I highly encourage you to do that. We're also going to look briefly at presentations. I don't think we're going to cover anything that wasn't in the video from two weeks ago, but just for my own sake, I want to cover it a little bit. I'm also doing something a little bit um, different this week in that in the summary I'm sending out, there's a reading list. Uh, you ab absolutely don't have to read everything on it. You don't actually have to read any of it. Um, I'm just including good resources that cover some of the topics we're talking about this week. A lot of them are places I went to ensure that my knowledge was sound. And I mean, I learned a lot from them because like I said, you can't keep everything in your head all the time. You can keep a lot, but not everything.